Mike mentioned to us that could be some of the same people who said Hosanna, said crucify him. I'm not sure of that. I think some of the people who said Hosanna went home, and when they said crucify him, they didn't say anything. But here's Jesus. Jesus turned his face to a city that imprisoned the innocent, decapitated the saints, enriched themselves, killed the prophets, stoned the truth tellers, executed troublemakers. Jesus steeled himself and turned his face to go to Jerusalem. It was not a welcome place for him. And so how did he go? Well, you know, Jesus didn't slip into, slip into Jerusalem unannounced uh, and secretly. He and his 12 kingdom conspirators called apostles, they went into town and Jesus did something strange. He t- sent two of his disciples and got a donkey. You know, donkeys aren't really esteemed in our society today. But they were then. If you had a donkey, you had a Cadillac or a Mercedes. That was something very special for you to have that. And so, and it was always a symbol of peace. If you rode into town on a donkey, you were holding out the olive branch of peace. I am here in peace, is what he was saying. But he sent them and he got the donkey and they put their clothes on his back and the clippity-clop of the donkey going down the highway to Jerusalem was soon drowned out. That was his announcement. And he didn't sneak into town. But as he went into town, this was a time of the year there could have been several million people in Jerusalem. This was, you know, Sunday school's great, but, you know, you couldn't put this on the back of a Sunday school picture card of Jesus. You see all these pictures of Jesus riding into... This was so much greater and grander than any of that. It wasn't just a few people waving branches. It was a sea of people. And as they went into town, the the crowd swelled at at the thought of the Son of God. And the Bible says, why were they praising him? They were praising him for everything that they had seen him do and heard him say. The miracles that he had finished. And they could not help but get on their feet and stand up and praise God for all the things that he had done. Then just give, give them that moment, okay? Let's not accuse them for something else later on. Let's just say, thank God for that moment. I can praise God really good today and tomorrow I may fall into sin. That doesn't negate my praise then. Give them their due. There were these thousands of people, probably. And the clippity-clop of the donkey as he went into town. And the Bible says that all Jerusalem was in turmoil about him. That's the second time he did that. When he was born, it says all Jerusalem was troubled. When he came into town and riding a donkey, the Bible says that Jerusalem was in turmoil. And the Greek word there is seismos. means earthquake. It's where we get our word seismic. The whole town was trembling as Jesus came into town as, a, as the Messiah and perfectly showing himself to any, everyone without fear and coming in peace. And his enemies stood dumb. They could not say a thing because he was so admired and so loved and was People stood in awe at him as they mutually shared an expression of appreciation and recognition and admiration of the Lord Jesus. And that was just a few days. Just a few days, and then he was nailed to a cross. The Bible says that Jesus came into town in Jerusalem and went to the temple and did a 360. He looked at everything. Then he went and spent the night in Bethany. Next day, according to Luke, he had a whip, one man, and he cleaned house. This was not a small spot, and this didn't happen in a minute. 
when Jesus cleansed the temple, it, was, it look, took at least a half hour, 45 minutes just for him to go through that place. And he cleaned house. And so now we hear the children singing and the lame and the, and the Gentiles and those who were pushed out before could now come and sit at the feet of Jesus and hear his teaching and praise his name and sing his songs because he had cleansed the temple. You are a temple. I'm a temple. Money changers dawn. Newly cleansed temple full of praise. We sang it this morning. How wonderful that is. Just to know Jesus and to be in that moment. You know, you and I should go to that moment. We should join that crowd. We should be with them side by side as they're waving their palm branches and saying, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Because he deserves our praise. So I have four goals for you today, for me and you. Number one, know that this event was an actual historical event, and it's still happening today. Across this globe today, I've heard it in Africa, I've heard, I've heard it here, I've heard it in our nation's capital, I've heard it in Oakland, I've heard it in San Francisco, where people are praising the name of our Lord yeah. Jesus Christ. He deserves our praise. And so know this and join it. And I want you to notice the positive effects in your own life when you join those who are admiring the Lord Jesus and his glory. You know, we have so much preaching today, and I'm sorry to be critical, and I don't want to be, but I've got to say it. There's so much preaching today. It's all about me, me, me. What do I need? What has God done for me lately? Has God, how does God bless my family? How does God bless me? You know, it's not about me, me. It's about Him. Amen. You worship Him, and He changes you. And I want us to come to face to face with our disappointed expectations. And I want us to come, number four, to a deeper place of praise in our life for the right reasons. For the right. When the cheering stops, the quiet starts. Join the chorus of magnificent praise. But there comes a day when all the hillside is empty, and people have gone back to their homes, and Jesus is moving forward to that place where they killed prophets, stoned people that were innocent, imprisoned killed the prophets and stoned truth-tellers. He went forward. They went home. And even some of his own disciples left him. They said, Lord, I'm behind you. I'm way behind you. I love to praise the Lord, don't you? But I want to praise him for the right reasons. And so just this, <clears throat> insights into the triumphal entry, there is great power in spontaneous praise for good or for bad. You and I need to stand before God and praise Him for just who He is, yes. not what He's given. That's second. There's great power in it. And like I said earlier today, you can go to a charismatic Pentecostal group and they're just dancing and praising God. Praise God for that. I've done some of that. I love it. You can go to a strict Presbyterian church. The first church I came to in California was an Orthodox Presbyterian church on Shattuck Avenue. They were stiff. But I enjoyed that worship because I knew when I look into the eyes of those people as they were singing those hymns, they were worshiping Jesus. I have no criticism for them. Beloved, I have no Pentecostal pride. I have no Baptistic leanings. I just want to praise Jesus, don't you? There's great p power in it. You know, that's why we come here isn't it? on Sunday morning and other times we come because we want to get into the place of praise. We need to praise Jesus. You know, the more I praise Jesus, the less time I have to be critical of other people. The more I praise Jesus, the less I have criticism of other people and the way they worship and other things. I don't care. 
Because Paul said, I don't care how they're doing it, what they're doing. I'm just praising God that the name of Jesus is being exalted in Philippians chapter 1. Insight into the triumphal entry of Jesus as he and his 12 co-conspirators came into town. The best praise rises from sure foundations. You know, you can praise God because somebody gets up there and plays an electric guitar really good. I like that, don't you? But, you know, after a while, you need something more. That's like eating a Twinkie. I need a piece of steak once in a while. That's why I want you to know some doctrine. I need to have sure foundations from which my praise and worship can rise in a solid, good reason. I can praise God because everybody else is doing it. You know, sometimes you go to church, that's all you can do. I'm just down. I just don't know what's going on in my soul. And there's a burden. I don't know what it is. And I come to church. I feel nothing. But I'm praising God with you because you're doing it. I'm doing it. That's okay to do. May God bring us through those times so we can praise him from a sure foundation. Why were these people on the road between Jericho and uh, the Mount of Olives in uh, Jerusalem praising him with such vigor and such glory and such color? I can see this in technicolor. Can you? The technicolor praise of Jesus all through that hillside. Why were they doing it? They were doing it because what he had done, what, who he was, and what they saw him do and what they heard him say. It's centered on Jesus. Beloved, bring your worship back to the sure foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just for who he is. That's where to start. And then you can go on what he's done for me, which is okay. Because he does praise for that too. Insights into the triumphal entry, like we said earlier, when the cheering stops, the quiet starts. When I saw Dave Henderson hit those runs, we got on the bar on our way home. Everybody's quiet. Everybody's quiet. But you're just ruminating on what you've been seeing, what you've done. You come to church sometimes, you say, Pastor, I come to church sometime, I go home, I just, I'm so quiet. Good, because that's when God's working, speaking to your heart. Language, quietness is a language that God understands. He's eloquent in the language of quiet, as well as in language of praise. Have those quiet times as well. An insight into the triumphal entry of Jesus is my exaltation may lift my expectation. I want you and I today to commit to something. I'm going to praise Jesus no matter if he meets none of my expectations. I've already gotten everything I need. But we sometimes, as we said before, sometimes people are going to give you this teaching Praise God so the presence of God can come and he can do things. No, God does things and his presence does things and you worship him because of that. It's good to have expectations of the Lord as long as you hold them tenderly. Beloved, can you let Jesus take anything out of your hands that you hold dear or you expect? Have you had expectations that have been dashed to the ground you're so disappointed? Insight into the triumphal entry, the gifts of disappointment and disillusionments resets my true reality. I want you to think about this. Jesus will never disappoint you, but he will disillusion you. Uh, if you haven't heard this before, I want you to hear it now. Jesus does, is not in the business of discouragement. He's in the business of encouragement. Do you know what an illusion is? is a false idea, a false expectation, something I hold dearly that i got to have. And sometimes Jesus and God the Father has to disillusion us. You want to see a bunch of disillusioned people? Some of those people that were walking with Jesus down the road, some of those 12 that were with him, those co-conspirators in the kingdom of God with him, they were so disillusioned because he had disappointed them. They, Jesus did not do the thing that they thought he should do. 
and how he should do it and when he should do it. Jesus had something so much more magnificent in mind than just setting up a little earthly kingdom on a little throne in Jerusalem. And so here we are today with millions of others in his kingdom because it's greater than their little puny expectations. And beloved, sometimes I need to have my little puny expectations disillusioned. It doesn't feel good. Scientists say they know why you get disillusioned. Your dopamine level in your brain goes away and you get glum. I think sometimes you just get a broken heart. Oh Lord Jesus, I wanted that ABC, but you let me have none of it. You emptied my hands of his treasure store to give me so much more. Please love me after I say these things. Some people can worship God as long as he's a holy matchmaker. I'll give me the best wife, the best husband ever. Some people are worshiping God as long as he's their cosmic bodyguard, protects them from each and every harm that comes their way. He's not going to do it. Paul said it's given unto us to suffer for Jesus. Some people worship God because he's the greatest, glorious nanny in the universe, and I'm, all my children are going to be perfect. Too late for me. I'm happy with my kids. I know they're going to listen to this recording, so I have to say that. <laughs> Some people worship Jesus as long as he's their holy, divine doctor. Jesus heals people. It's happened in this room, but he's the great physician. He gives us medicine sometimes that we don't want to take. Some people will worship Jesus as long as he's the the great CEO financial problem solver of their bank account. There were some Christians recently that were saying they were confessing money into their bank account. I'm confessing that God is going to put $10,000 in my bank account. You know, maybe God, he could do that anytime. But he wants to put the gold in your soul. He wants to put the silver in your heart. He wants to put the sterling quality in your life. Take that if you get the bank account good. I was preaching not too long ago. A friend of mine is a lawyer in, um, in Holland. He's been here. And Brian said, you were preaching one time that God was not going to plop a Mercedes down in your parking lot. And the next picture was his Mercedes parked in his parking lot. (laughs) So God can do that. But we worship God because of who he is. And you know what? If I get my my false illusions gone then God can put into my life the real stuff, the gold of the soul. And he's going to make it so much bigger, so much better, so much more valuable than anything that I had conceived of before. I am so glad that God has not answered some of my prayers that I thought were just so important. I am so glad that he didn't answer those prayers. Because he said, John, I got something so much better for you. And so roar your praises out to Jesus. The mutually shared expressions of appreciation and recognition and admiration and applause for the Lord Jesus because he is good and he gives us what we need, not so much what we want. And on this side of eternity, I may not fully see the whole picture, but you know what? He is in control. And I don't know if you're bold enough to pray this prayer. Lord, Go ahead and disillusion me. If I have false illusions in my mind, in my soul, disappoint me, make me seek the true and the right thing, and let me praise you out of a sure foundation of just who you are. Can you say amen?